G'day guys, Chris from Core Electronics again. Today I'd like to show you how to update firmware on the expansion boards from PyCon. So we're not talking about microcontrollers like this WiPi, we're talking about the expansion boards that you put on the back of those. As always, there's documentation linked down below, so you can take your time. The documentation for this procedure is quite verbose because I found the documentation from PyCom is brief to the point of difficult. So uh, I hope you appreciate the uh, level of detail I've gone into here, and I hope you can go from top to bottom in that uh, without making a mistake, because I've, uh, I've put all the learnings from my mistakes into that documentation. So we'll start off by having a look at the hardware that I have here on the bench, and then we'll go to the PC and do most of the work from there. So on the bench here, I have uh, an expansion board 2.0, and I'm pointing to just below the USB socket, there's a chip there, which is an FTDI chip. It's just a serial translation chip to run the USB connection. This board has no microcontroller and therefore can't be updated. So expansion board 2.0, job done. I've got a Wi-Fi here, just to reiterate, we're not even using the microcontroller boards as part of the update process. We don't need a Wi-Fi, we don't need any of the microcontrollers at all. We're working just with PySense and PyTrack on their own and a USB connection to the PC. Now, the reason I mentioned why that FTDI chip was there is that in the same location on both of these boards is a PIC microcontroller. And there is firmware code on that PIC microcontroller for both of these. So now we'll go to the PC and I'll show you the process of updating them. If we open up a browser, head to the Core Electronics page, through Learn, into Tutorials, and then I can just pick PyCom, and the second latest uh, video that's, or tutorial that's gone up is PyTrack and PySense firmware here on the left. So I'm gonna click into that one. All right, so this is my procedure that's quite verbose, some big screenshots in it, but I'm sure you can get through it top to bottom fairly quickly. I'll take you to, in the second paragraph here, I have a link to the PyCom documentation, and I'll just open that now. So in the PyCom documentation, this links directly to updating the PySense and PyTrack, but I'll step back from that just for a moment. Okay, so this is the updating process for PySense and PyTrack. And if you look at the contents, we're down in chapter four, 4.2.1, updating firmware. Not to be confused with, if you go further up, under getting started, 1.3.1, updating firmware. So this other updating firmware area is talking about updating the firmware on the microcontroller. And the reason I'm being pedantic about updating the firmware on the expansion boards, PySense and PyTrack, is because of what's documented here. So if we were updating a microcontroller, say a WiPi, we would read this procedure. If we were using a PySense or a PyTrack, we would have to switch over to this tab. And the first item on the procedure is before connecting your module to a PySense PyTrack board, you should update the firmware on the board. Instructions on that can be found here. So before doing an update on any of your microcontroller devices, the expansion board behind it needs to be updated. So if I click here, I go back to the page that I started on. Okay, so now we're talking about firmware on PySense and PyTrack. Just gonna open up a Windows Explorer window and drop into my downloads folder, just so I can watch where things land. We need to download the PyTrack device firmware update. I think that's what DFU stands for. We'll also download PySense, DFU. And looking down, down the page until we get to the Windows instructions, we also need a DFU utility. We'll click and download that. And we also need an installer tool, this thing called Zadig. So that takes us to the Zadig website. And near the bottom of the page here, I'm gonna click Zadig 2.3 to download that. All right. So going back to my uh, instructions here, this is our preparation. We've got the files. We've done part one, part two. Now we need to organize the files. We need this one file of ours that we downloaded that's a zip file. 
we need the contents of that to be in the downloads folder, in the root folder of downloads. So we're going to extract that file and then navigate through two folders to get to its contents, scoop up all of those files, cut them, drop back into the downloads folder and paste them in there. So as per PyCom's instructions, we now have all of the files that we could possibly need in the same folder. Now, because I've um, run through this a couple of times, the best thing to do is to have the PyCom documentation and my documentation, as well as device manager. So I'm just gonna hit start and type dev. Yes, device manager. We might pull that over to the bottom right here. And we need to run this Zadig utility. So just from downloads, I'm gonna double click on Zadig 2.3. Yes, let's allow that to run. And we'd also need a command prompt. C-O-M, command prompt. Okay, we'll use this as well. Now, dry run is what I've called the next part. What we want to do is get familiar with how this process works so that um, you're familiar with especially the timing of it. There's a built-in seven second delay in this process where when you connect PySense or PyTrack with the button held down, it goes into device firmware update mode and it stays in that mode for seven seconds and then reverts back to being just a normal serial device. So there's a seven second window in which to get something done. And rather than try to do the whole thing in seven seconds, we can just do it over and over and get a step done each time. So, so that we can see how that looks, let's do a dry run. I'm looking at device manager on my screen and I'm going to pick the PyTrack at the moment. Turn it around the right way. So when I plug in the PyTrack without touching the button, the PyTrack should appear in device manager. We'll see device manager blink a couple of times. Right, so now under ports, we have a USB serial device, COM10. That's our PyTrack. If we unplug it, not only does the USB serial device disappear, but so does the ports category because there are no other ports. Now, let's see what happens if I hold down the button, which is in the middle of the board, hold down the button and connect at the same time. Now a device has appeared called unknown device under other devices. Now watch it because it's about to disappear. Right, it's gone back to being a serial device and now we've got COM10 again. So for seven seconds there, there was an unknown device found and there was no uh, driver installed for it. So that's what the Zadig utility is going to do for us in the top right. When we plug in the PyTrack with the button down, it will be in firmware update mode. Zadig will allow us then to install the Windows driver for that device. Unfortunately, Zadig comes up with the wrong driver selected by default. So where it says Win USB in the driver box, we need to use the little radio buttons on the end there, toggle buttons, whatever, and change it to LibUSBK. Here we go. So I'm going to disconnect the device again, hold down the button. Now watch the Zadig application. When I reconnect, in the top gray box, it has found unknown device. And if I click the in install driver bo button now, it should install the driver. However, I've spent too much time talking and I need to just hurry up and get it done. So I'm going to leave my mouse here, hovering over the install WCID driver button. And I'm going to repeat the process by unplugging, holding down the button, reconnecting the USB, putting my hand on the mouse and hitting install driver. Right, so you can almost ignore the messages you get from Zadig. Uh, it has given me error messages to tell me it failed when it succeeded. It's also told me that it has succeeded when it failed. So I don't trust this uh, completion message from Zadig. I want to check with device manager to make sure this is right. So what I'm looking for now is that when I put the device in firmware update mode and connect it, a new uh, category will appear in device manager. That will be the libusbk category and our device should appear under that. So I'm going to hold down the button again, reconnect the USB again. Looking at device manager, there's now a libusbk category with unknown device number one in it. 
That's the driver successfully installed. However, as always, seven seconds passes and that device effectively disappears and turns back into a serial port. So I've actually gone ahead and done the driver installation part without pointing to the documentation for that. Now we're gonna go ahead and do the firmware update. So there's a little error in my documentation here. DFU util dash static dot exe minus D P Y S. I'm going to copy that and in my uh, command window here, I need to go into the downloads folder and that D should be a capital D. Now, the reason I've got P Y S there is that you can just press tab to complete the file for the firmware uh, image. But because I've got PyTrack, I need to change that to PYT and hit tab. Okay, so now we're going to tell the DFU utility to install the driver, or sorry, to install the firmware for PyTrack. So again, disconnect, hold down the button, reconnect. When we're sure that the device has appeared in the right category in Device Manager, we can hit enter. Boom, done. So it spews a bit of text here in the command prompt. Most importantly, at the bottom, we see download went to 100%, download done, state two, here it says no error condition present, done. So that appears to be successful. And because the device is reverted to a serial port, it certainly seems like it's working. Now, one of the things that can go wrong along the way is that you might accidentally install the wrong Zadig uh, install the wrong driver using Zadig. So I'll show you how that works. If I need to remove this device from the PC, now again, the firmware update version of this device, I'm gonna press the button and reconnect it again. Go to device manager, look for the libusb k category, right click, uninstall the device, tick delete the driver software for this device. Now I've deliberately paused here because it seems everything's frozen. We don't seem to have a seven second uh, lag here because I think the device is reverted but uh, device manager hasn't updated. What we're doing here is removing the driver from Windows. This isn't doing anything to the board. Right, so we re remove the driver from Windows and now if we were to put it in firmware update mode, it would go back to being just an unknown device. Button in, connect the cable, and now it's listed as an unknown device. Now I'm going to close and reopen the Zadig utility. Mainly because it tends to lock onto a different device uh, once it's successfully installed the driver and it's safer just to open it blank. Now see by default the WinUSB driver comes up. I'm going to go ahead and install that. It's the wrong driver, but I'll show you what happens. So in device manager, when we go into firmware update mode, it will be listed under other devices. And I'm just gonna go ahead and hover my mouse pointer over install WCID driver. And let's go to firmware update mode one more time. The unknown device one has been found by Zadig. Install the driver. Driver successful, but ignore that message. Again, we have to go back to firmware update mode to see where it appears in Device Manager. And this time it will appear on the bottom of the list under USB devices. Bottom of the list, USB devices, unknown device one. So we've installed the wrong driver. That will not allow us to do an update because we need the libusbk driver. So again, as we just did, firmware update mode, one last time. Go to the bottom of Device Manager, find your device, right click, uninstall, Tick the box for delete the software. There we go. Windows has forgotten all about it. So I hope you found that useful. It's a, a bit of a rigmarole to get through that, but it's uh, it's advisable to make sure that you've got your firmware update done on both of those devices. I don't know how often they might come out from PyCom, but certainly when the next update comes, I'll be ready. I'll know how to do it. So uh, thanks again for watching Core Electronics.